In our previous video, we introduced the idea of a non-singular matrix, that is those matrices which have an inverse, and therefore we essentially could divide out that matrix because you just multiply by the reciprocal. That's all division is, multiplying by the reciprocal. But not every matrix is non-singular, sometimes they're singular. So how can we determine whether a matrix is non-singular or not? Well, in the two by two case, there's a very simple formula you can use. If you have a matrix A, which again, it's two by two, you have A, B, C, D right here. Then it turns out we can determine whether the matrix is non-singular or singular by computing the following number. We're gonna compute the number A, D minus B, C. Now, as the name might suggest, this number is commonly referred to as the determinant of the matrix A, D, uh, the, the matrix A right here. Because after all, if this number is non-zero, that determines that the matrix is non-singular. And if the, if the number AD minus BC is equal to zero, that actually tells you that the matrix is singular. So yeah, this determinant being non-zero, this is a topic we'll talk about later in this series about determinants in chapter five, so stay tuned for that. But this AD minus BC is this two by two determinant. And when this number is non-zero, our matrix can be non-singular, and we have a formula for the inverse of the matrix. So the inverse of the matrix A is going to be 1 over the determinant of A, A, D minus B, C. So you can see why that cannot be 0, otherwise you divide it by 0. This is what I was alluding to in the previous video, that we call matrices singular because they have singularities. That their uh, matrix will be singular if and only if its determinant equals 0. And that singularity is coming from the 0 determinant. We can't divide by 0. So if it's non-singular, the determinant will be non-zero. Sorry, if, it, if it's a non-singular matrix, the determinant will be non-zero. And then you're going to divide by the determinant, but you also have to switch up the numbers a little bit. You're going to notice that the, the numbers on the diagonal are going to swap places. Um, a will become a D, and D will become an A. And then those numbers that are on the off diagonals, so B and C, you're going to take a negative sign in front of them. And this is just kind of a formula to memorize here. We could verify that it works. I mean, if you take this matrix A and you times it by this proposed inverse matrix, A inverse, you'll see that this thing will turn out to be the identity matrix, the I2. Uh, I would recommend you try doing that in general. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this formula to compute the inverse of this two by two matrix A right here. Now, the first thing we have to do is check the determinant. So you're gonna take the product of the diagonals, one and four, so the determinant, of A, you're gonna get one times four, and then you subtract from it the product of the other diagonals, two and three. You see that this is gonna be four. Oh, I wrote, I wrote two, three times three. That should be two times three, sorry. So you're gonna get four minus six, which is negative two, which is not zero. So this tells us that our matrix is non-singular. It is invertible, therefore it has an inverse. And that inverse we can compute using the formula from above. So A inverse is gonna look like a one over negative two times. We're gonna swap the numbers on the main diagonal, so we get a four and a one. And then the numbers in, off the diagonal, we're going to put, uh, we're gonna put some negative signs in front of those. And so then if you distribute the negative one half through, you're gonna get negative two, uh, positive one, three halves, and negative one half. Or you could use decimals if you prefer. That's not a big deal either way. And so then we get the following inverse of the matrix A. So that's all that one has to do to find an inverse for a two by two matrix. And let's actually verify that this is in fact the case. If we take A times A inverse, you're going to take the original matrix A, which remember was one, two, three, four, and times it by this calculated matrix A inverse here, negative two, one, three halves, and negative one half. And if we go through the calculation here, take the first row times the first column, we end up with negative two plus, well, two times three halves is a three. Oh, okay, you'll notice that negative two plus three is a one. Take the first row times the second column. You're going to get one minus, two times a half is one, that's gonna be a zero. Take the second row times the first column. You're going to get negative six plus, well, two goes into four two times, so you get two times three, which is six, that's likewise a zero, and then, second row, second column, you're going to end up with a three minus a two. And so we can see that this is the two by two identity. I'll let you compute the other way around uh, to show that that one also gives you the identity. Therefore, we have found the real McCoy inverse to this matrix. Now, why are we interested in finding inverses of matrices in the first place? Well, 
when we go back to the beginning of this lecture series here, we were interested in solving the linear system AX equals B. This matrix equation encodes the entire linear system. Now, if we could, if we could divide by A, or in this case, what I mean to say is, if we could multiply by A inverse, what we could do is the following. You could multiply the left-hand side of both, you could multiply the left-hand side of both sides of this equation by A inverse, and because of matrix properties of these operations, you'll get A inverse times A times X, and then the right-hand side is A inverse B, like so. Well, A inverse times A would be the identity, which when you times that by A, I mean, sorry, when you times that by X, you'll just get back the vector X. And so notice what we have here is that if a matrix is non-singular, it has an inverse, then the solution to the linear system will just be x equals a inverse b. We could just times the vector b by the inverse of the matrix, and that'll solve the system of equations. We can solve this matrix equation. It'd be kind of like if you had the equation 2x equals 4. What do you do? You divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals 2. That's the same idea with matrices, that if there's an inverse, we can multiply by that inverse. Now, matrix multiplication is non-commutative, so notice you need to multiply both the left-hand side and the right-hand side by a, the left, on the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the equation, you have to multiply by A inverse on the left in order to cancel the A on the left. All right, that, that is critical here. So imagine we want to solve the system of equations x1 plus 2x2 equals 5 and 3x1 plus 4x2 equals 6. Now, if we take the matrix... Uh, the coefficient matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, and we take the vector b to be 5 and 6 right here, you'll hopefully recognize that, oh, wow, wait a second, that was the matrix A we just did a moment ago, yay! Uh, this is, we have its inverse matrix already computed. Therefore, the solution to this system of equation will be A inverse b, which the inverse matrix we saw from the previous slide will be negative 2, 1, 3 halves, and negative one half, we times that by B, which is five and six. And so doing the multiplication there, you're going to end up with a negative 10 plus six, that gives us a negative four. And then if you take the second row times B, you're going to get 15 halves minus six halves, uh, which that turns out to be nine halves, or 3.5 if you prefer. And then you can verify that this is, in fact, the solution to this system of equations. If we take here, a looking at the first equation, if you take a negative 4 plus 9, that's equal to 5. So that passes the first equation. And if you take the second equation, you're going to take negative 12 plus 18, uh, which that gives you a 6. So this is, in fact, a solution to the system of equations. We can solve system of, of linear equations. That is, we can solve this, this matrix equation if we have a matrix inverse. So invertible matrices have some advantages. We can solve various uh, matrix equations using inverses if they exist.